I have recently acquired this Agilent 53132A for a GPS DO project what I am working on. I have upgraded this instrument with two optional modules. First one is 10 MHz ultra stable OCXO module and second is 3 GHz RF amplifier and a pre-scale module. These two modules are optional in this instrument. First module provides ultra stable 10 MHz reference clock for this instrument. More detail about this project you can find in another video and also on my website. The second option is an RF amplifier and a, and a pre-scaler which, enab which enables the instrument to make frequency up, up gigahertz. You can see here channel 3, 100 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. The coax from this third channel BNC connector is directly running into the input amplifier of this port. This port has this board has four stage RF amplifier and a pre-scaler IC. Let's do some quick tests. As I, as I am not an RF person, so I have limited means to test this board. I have this DIY style of active probe and my MDO 3000 spectrum analyzer which go which goes up to 3 gigahertz. This is the board under test. You can see on the board there are four RF amplifiers these little chips which you see here cascadable 50 ohm gain blocks they provide around 7.2 db gain per stage from 100 megahertz to 3 gigahertz input is connected to a mcx connector which is mounted on the back after input nice big power package anti surge register two clamping diode for input protection and four stage of mmic 50 ohm gain blocks at the output there are more diode protection and one more 10 ohm register. This is the pre-scalar IC MB510. It divides the input signal by 128. And this little chip is a 5 volt regulator for this previous pre-scalar IC. Port is right now powered with my bench power supply, 12 volts, and consuming around 120 172 mA. There is a MCX connector. And a BNC to MCX cable is connected to my arbitrary waveform generator, which is generating 120 MHz test signal. As as active probes are really expensive, we'll be using this DIY kind of active probe. This active probe is powered from my bench power supply, and using a BNC cable connected to my MDO 3000 spectrum analyzer input. With the help of spectrum analyzer, we will be measuring gain at each stage. Input to the board is connected to my arbitrary waveform generator using this MCX cable. Right now we are generating 120 MHz as minus 40 dB. Let's probe the input of the first gain block. This is how it looks on the input of the first MMIC. It's minus 61 dBm. These probes are not really good at measuring the absolute level. We are only interested in the relative measurement. At the output of first gain block amplifier, it should be somewhere around 7 dB up. Now I am probing output of the first stage. You can see it's 54.2 dBm from 61.2 dBm, which is exactly 7 dB up. Let's probe the input of the second stage. can see on the spectrum analyzer is 55.4 dBm. Let's probe the output. It's 48 dBm. Input for the first stage was 61.2 dBm. The amplification on second stage is around 6.8 dBm. Let's look at the third stage. Now we are probing third stage. This is around 49.1 dBm. And now we are connected to output of the third stage. It's 44.3 dBm. Gain on this particular is comparatively less. Let's probe next stage. Let's probe the last stage. Minus 46 dBm. And output the, of this stage is minus 30. On the last stage, we are looking at around 15 dBm gain because the load is way less than 50 ohm, so you will see more gain. Input was minus 61 dBm. 
n minus 31 dBm at last stage output, we get total gain of around 46 dBm, which is 11.5 dBm per stage. As by active probe is quite limited in terms of input amplitude, so we cannot probe higher signal levels. As per the data sheet of MP510 Prescaler chip, the maximum signal amplitude is 10 dBm and P1 dB bandwidth of our RF amplifier MSA0986 is around 10.5 dBm. When we are feeding a higher signal amplitude, input into this chip will be limited because of the P1 dB bandwidth of these RF amplifiers at 10.5 dBm. For the input level sensitivity, we will be using my Siglent arbitrary waveform generator. We will be generating 120 MHz sine wave from this instrument and we will be adjusting the output amplitude. I only have a DIY RF generator and with that DIY RF generator, you do not have a total freedom on output amplitude. You can adjust it but not to the any arbitrary value you like. So we need to resort to this Siglent with maximum 120 megahertz output you can go down to minus 50 dBm which is going to be more than what we need the input signal amplitude for 3 gigahertz option as specified by Hlint in their specification sheet for frequency from 100 megahertz to 2.7 gigahertz should be minus 27 dBm to plus 19 dBm and from frequency 2.7 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz should be minus 20 dBm to plus 13 dBm so, for a 120 MHz signal, the prescaler module should function at the minimum signal amplitude of minus 27 dBm and a maximum of 19 dBm. Right now, we have set the output amplitude to be minus 45 dBm. Let's look at the output. The display is stable at 120 MHz. Let's go up a little bit to minus 27 dBm. Let's look at frequency counter output. It is absolutely stable at 120 megahertz. Let's go further down. Let's check it minus, minus 35 dBm. Output is still the same. I have already tested the instrument up to the minimum capability of my arbitrary waveform generator which is minus 50 dBm. At around minus 46 dBm you can see some you can see some instability in the output. Let's go down to minus 45 dBm. At minus 45 dBm, output is still the same. Let's go further down to minus 50 dBm. This is the minimum possible with my arbitrary waveform generator. As you can see, output have changed a little bit. I slowly go up now minus 49 dBm, minus 48 dBm, minus 47 dBm, you can say roughly around 47, minus 47 dBm, output is quite stable. So input level sensitivity definitely passes the specification. Let's check high amplitude, I'll set it to 10 dBm output. And I have now, now set it to 10 dBm output, 120 megahertz, 10 dBm. The signal is still the same. Let's change the frequency a little bit. 119 megahertz, 118 megahertz, 117 megahertz. For the high frequency test, we'll be using my DIY RF signal generator here. This is an AD4351 based RF signal generator. I have published this project also. The details about this project is also available on my website. This little hardware is USB connected and can generate signal from 35 MHz to 4.4 GHz. And there is a QT application running which can control this over USB. This is the application. Right now generating 3.4 GHz at RF output level of plus 5 dBm. The output level is not very much adjustable. You have only these four output levels, minus 4 dBm, minus 1 dBm, plus 2 dBm, and plus 5 dBm. So let's, let's leave it to 5 dBm. Let's look at the instrument. Right now, we are generating 3.4 GHz. 
an instrument is showing 3.4 gigahertz although this third channel is supposed to go up to 3 gigahertz only but it can easily go up to 3.5 giga i have tested it up 3.5 gigahertz let's go up a little bit as you can see in the display output is adjustable at 10 kilohertz step i'll go 10 kilohertz up and you will notice a change on display this digit just went one up let's go one more it will be 3400.02 megahertz now now 0 0.03 0 0.04 0 0.05 0 0.06 0 0.07 0 0.08 0 0.09 0 You can go down in frequency. Let's go to let's go to 400 megahertz. Now we are generating 400.1 megahertz on display. It's absolutely 400.1 megahertz. Let's go completely down at 100 megahertz. Now we are generating 100.13 megahertz. And display is showing 3 megahertz. As this is an open source project, so link to the source in the description is available on my website.